In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Numbers chapter 3, verses 44 through 51, where I'll ask the question, why are the firstborn redeemed? Numbers chapter 3, verses 44 through 51 says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the people of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle. The Levites shall be mine, I am the Lord. And as the redemption price for the 273 of the firstborn of the people of Israel over and above the number of male Levites, you shall take five shekels per head. You shall take them according to the shekel of the sanctuary, the shekel of 20 geras, and give the money to Aaron and his sons as the redemption price for those who are over. So Moses took the redemption money from those who were over and above those redeemed by the Levites. From the firstborn of the people of Israel, he took the money, 1,365 shekels, by the shekel of the sanctuary. And Moses gave the redemption money to Aaron and his sons, according to the word of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. As the book of Numbers begins, you have this counting. This counting of all of the fighting men. All of those who are over 20 and still able to go into battle and all of the different tribes count up the number of people who are able to fight. And even the tribe of Levi counts up all of his people. But then this redemption idea sticks up its head and it might be a little bit confusing for those of us coming from a very different culture. What in the world is going on with this redemption thing? Why? are the firstborn of all of the tribes of Israel required to be given to the Lord? And how is this replacement idea of the Levites for the firstborn played out? Well, here are three thoughts from Numbers chapter 3, verses 44 through 51, answering the question, why are the firstborn redeemed? Thought number one, the final plague. The book of Numbers begins as the people of Israel are getting ready to set out to go to the Promised Land. In fact, the book of Numbers is the, the failure for them to go into the Promised Land and then the subsequent 40 years of wandering. But what happens right before that? Right before that, you had the Exodus. You had this great judgment that God placed on the people of Egypt, where the firstborn son of the entire nation was killed. Well, this idea of the firstborn son belonging to God is deep-rooted in the identity of the people of Israel. The firstborn of all people, of all cattle, of all things, belongs to the Lord and is to be devoted to him. This is seen in the judgment that God does against the people of Egypt. And then it's seen again here, where the firstborn of all the people of Israel are redeemed by the Levites representing them before God. Thought number two, the Levites. The Levites are the tribe descended from Levi, and they are distinct. They are different from all of the other tribes of Israel. And here is the area in which they're different. These are the people who the Lord has chosen to represent the firstborn of all of the people of Israel. So instead of the Lord taking the firstborn of all the people of Israel to be his priestly class, he chooses this tribe to represent all the firstborn of Israel. And he does this to demonstrate that the firstborn of everyone and everything belongs to him. They belong to him and are special to him. Now, I don't know if we have the same significance in Western culture today. Actually, I know that we don't, of the firstborn. So because my brother is born before me, he doesn't necessarily have a greater responsibility within the family, at least in our Western culture. But in the Bible, in the ancient world, the firstborn son was responsible to carry on the family line. When the patriarch died, it was the firstborn son who took the lead role in caring for the family. And it's because of this greater responsibility that the firstborn son has, and the greater value placed on the firstborn son, that the Lord claims them as his own. Thought number three, the Messiah. The important thing for us as modern day believers to recognize in this firstborn redemption 
that takes place is that Christ is our representative before God. So the Messiah becomes the firstborn over what? Over all creation. And as the firstborn over all creation, he belongs to the Lord, but he is representative of all the people. So with all of this stuff that's going on with the tribe of Levi representing the firstborn sons of Israel and becoming this priestly class, it is setting the stage for us to understand the great and pivotal role that Jesus plays as the representative for all the people of God before the Lord. And it's this beautiful picture that helps us to see that the Lord redeems his people and he does so in accordance with his own will. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Numbers chapters 1 through 4. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.